Hello everyone, and welcome to a special Halloween episode of Casket Talk. And we will talk about Saturday morning unsolved mystery. So, basically this week was actually more going to be kind of a spooky one. Timed well with the Halloween and the spookiness and all that. Uh, we got to talking about basically childhood mysteries. Stuff that, in our childhoods... We're mysterious, and sometimes, and we're talking about, like, it could be just urban legends of the neighborhood. It could be, like, the weird, creepy telephone game with kids that just turned out to be very warped or something like that in your school. We're like, oh, did you hear about the janitor who did this and this and this? Really, like, the realistic is it, he probably just retired, you know? <laughs> um, or just, like, maybe unsolved crimes you heard about through, like, you know other means and stuff and it like slowly devolved and in like invaded your own like psyche of your personal like experiences in the world when you're a kid you know who knows you know this is basically what we're talking about like it's stuff that uh was spooky to us as a kid and um you know it could just basically be anything really because kids are stupid that's mm -hmm. just how it works um, we're going to go ahead and start with stuff that, like, while we think about it now, it's still kind of creepy to this day. As uh, as adults, when we look back and go, you know what, I could have never found an, uh, never found an answer for it. Uh, did you have stuff like that? Okay, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, dang it. Okay, so, back when we were kids, uh, there was this really weird house that kind of appeared out of nowhere. So, basically, for the most part, it was, um... So, uh, our, our, our cousins had, like, they, they found a bunch of toys. There was, like, this, like, they, they, they had a bunch of toys, and, because cause it was me and my sisters, and we were just kind of playing near this apartment, and um, our cousins showed up, and they're like, oh, look at all these cool toys that we found. So, that they're the ones that originally found it and stuff, too? Yeah. Okay. So, we were, like... Where did you get all this stuff? We're, we're all poor. Like, what the hell? Yeah, like, <laughs> who wants, like, I want to get some toys. So they're like, oh, it's over here. So they showed us, and it was kind of like around the corner, and then you, uh, it was just like one or two houses away, and it was this completely abandoned house. So we walked through, and this place was so old that, uh, uh, what is it? The, the floor was like going out. There was like dirt and grass, right, in the floor, and it was like growing through the dirt. And then there was this room, which just had like a bunch of toys, and it was filled with. It was filled from like wall, to, like the room was like the wall to wall. The entire floor was covered with toys and just like stuffed animals and a bunch of that stuff. And it was just purely in that room. Yeah. Oh well. That's and then everything else, everything else is like kind of abandoned, I guess. Was, um, was at least that room kind of cleaned up and stuff too? Like, was it no, in a better it's, condition or was it just abandoned too? It's, it's just as abandoned too. Completely. That's that's spooky. That's that's where that, that's <laughs> that's where some like interesting crap happens that uh, YouTube won't allow us to talk about. Yeah, and then I didn't get anything because I don't know. It was it was, was kind of weird. Like I didn't get a weird vibe from it, but um, I guess I felt like you know we're not supposed to be here and. Right. Um, my sister wanted to take this like giant mechanical parakeet thing, mm -hmm. and I was like, "No, don't get it. Don't like, don't take anything from here." Because I didn't get anything either, but my cousins did, and it's probably because they picked all the cool shit. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah I was, didn't like any of this. This all of us missing arms and legs and yeah. batteries. Plus, we weren't wearing any shoes, so we couldn't stay there too long because <laughs> <laughs> the it was like the weeds or something was like pricking our feet. So we're just like, yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. It's the children's nails coming from the ground. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of like, I'll show it right here. It's kind of like in this area. I, st I, still, I still remember the, that, the, the apartment from the day. And I, I always wondered, like, I went back to look for it on Google Earth. Right. And I was like, I guess it's not there anymore. Or maybe it was like further back than what I remembered. But... Man, California was weird. California's California. always weird. Let's be real here. <laughs> it's never stopped. So it's just got more <laughs> pretentious about it. Like, let's be real. It's the whole reason we will trade California and Oregon and Washington for Japan. Just swap <laughs> the two around. That way you guys can just keep 
keep the communism in one weird island and all starve so we don't have to constantly owe anybody anything at that <laughs> place. Well, because, like, the weird thing was it looked like it was abandoned, like, 15 to 20 years. And I'm like, I don't remember seeing this. Like, it just kind of appeared out of nowhere. But <laughs> It's like another Goosebumps story yeah. right there. Well, there was, there's a lot that, like, looking back now for me, um, there was, there was one park, and we're just going to call it Fabersham. We're going to call that Fabersham Park. And this Fabersham Park had some of the creepiest crap that has ever happened. In fact, before I even get into it, we kind of explored different areas before and kind of did some house hunting once before. And we ended up seeing a house that was across the street from said Fabersham Park. And that was so creepy to me because I was never able to answer a lot of the weird crap that would happen there Mm -hmm. that I just didn't want to, like I was like an advocate of just getting the hell out away from this place. (laughs) It was crazy, right? So I'm going to start with one of them and it it, it was just a, it's, it's, it's a weird mystery and I won't make it like kind of say sound paranormal but it was like interesting but there was a uh, a uh, foreign Asian family that just had a lot of kids and uh, several of them would actually go to this lake that's near this Faversham Park and they would just fish stuff out of it right Mm -hmm. and it was not the greatest idea because it's it's a stagnant park it's a stagnant pond uh, lake because it doesn't have like everything else gets washed into it and it just stays there yeah like it doesn't there's no outflow or anything so there's no it just stagnates it dries up over the winter or over the summer and it fills up after in the spring and stuff like it's it's been one of those right it's swampy it's nasty it's all but they would still fish out of it but the thing that was really weird is the goldfish and i'm talking like actual goldfish like they would look like goldfish right they uh when they would you would pull them out and i think it was because people would kind of abandon goldfish there Mm -hmm. because there's a lot of like very ritzy end of the very farthest end of this park is like a very ritzy neighborhood and i I could probably already theorize that people used to go down there and just kind of dump fish out there and some of them may not have been fully dead they just kind of revived in it and stuff Mm -hmm. um but these goldfish would have like bone spines kind of sticking out of their fins and stuff it was crazy how it like just twist and mutate these little dudes and i'm like literally i if the government knew about it or the cdc or whatever we would have just locked down the whole country just by that 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 <laughs> lake and say you know what the, the next disease came from these weirdo fuckers and the and you know what we'd believe it we'd legitimately believe it let's be <laughs> real here you know because that sounds a hell of a lot uh more believable than just random bat soup <laughs> so but um it was a really weird, like, it's just a weird thing that you would just see come out of them. And they were just fishing, like, oh, these are going to be delicious. I'm like, w- what? No, they, they they looked like they would taste like the stale-ass gushers. Like, they just looked so bad, they're, So dude. they're fishing out mutant fish? Yeah. And they would take them home and eat it. What the fuck? Yeah. It was, like, the weirdest crap, you know? And they weren't even, like, that big. They were just, you know, maybe a size of my fist or something like they weren't that big <laughs> they're bigger than your usual goldfish uh-huh. and stuff but they would have like wild spines that would like be enough from a knuckle to knuckle like length and which is big for a fish that big you mm-hmm. know that small you know and like the weird oddities at that park didn't end there like when people would walk through that place and i'm talking about adults would report it teenagers would report it it used to be a place where teenagers would try to like park in the furthest end of the park and get some nookie together and stuff. After a little while, like that stopped happening because there would be like weird shadow figures and stuff that would be hanging out in like some of the fields and just standing there. And it's like like you don't even see it as like a human. It just kind of looks like a weird shadowy like undefined pillar. And like you could walk around them and stuff. And like, what is that? Like, oh, what the hell's going on? And it was slowly just kind of sink back into the, like the uh, the grasslands and stuff. But like it was so weird and abnormal, nobody really wanted to get close to them. 
and stuff, and they would just stand there, and then just, like, disappear, and nobody saw any faces, nobody saw any definition, or arms, or whatever, it was just, like, weird phallic shadows come out, and pop back down, I'm like, what the hell? You know, spooky hard haunts, man, don't even, don't, <laughs> don't deal with it. But, like, this place was wild. Like, there's not only that, but there was a time that there was supposed to be a, uh, I'm just gonna just keep rolling. Like, th- literally, a <laughs> lot of my weirdest mysteries come from this park. I'm not gonna even gonna lie. Like, it's not just a oh, oh, like, it's been a back-to-back type of thing. Like, there was a time there was a um, a uh, meteor shower that was supposed to happen, right? Mm-hmm. I was out there with my kid, you know, with my kid brothers and my uh, mother, and we were trying to check it out and stuff. And they were hanging out, throwing rocks in the lake and stuff. And we we're looking, and then we saw this like weird wisp. And we thought it was just the cloud. I'm like, wow, that cloud's wisp is moving faster than most clouds. And I remember my mother going, well, hold up a moment. That's um, moving the other way. And we like kind of like cross reference with the small clouds. Yeah, it was going the opposite way of the wind and everything. And it was like doing these weird like back and forth swaying and stuff. And like we were trying to process what the hell that was. <laughs> and then eventually kind of stopped kind of i wouldn't say over us but like close enough to above us that kind of got us a little startled before the wisps were just kind of blown away not not, not just like evaporated and disappeared it just it was like somebody like you know how somebody blows uh at somebody else's smoke mm-hmm. when they're smoking a cigarette or something and it just kind of dissipates it was kind of like that and we're like oh guess what it is time to leave <laughs> <laughs> and We left, and I have never been able to find a way. And because we didn't see any silhouettes or anything, there was no black shadows up back there or anything. You could literally see the stars that it passes by and stuff past it. And it was just wild looking, right? So we thought it was some kind of aircraft, a UFO of some kind, that went through a couple of clouds, and the clouds were just kind of still clinging onto the front of the hole or something like Mm -hmm. that. I think that's what, what we were seeing. But I couldn't... I couldn't fathom what the hell would would make the shape that that hole was, you know? I, like It kind of looked kind of like an arc, kind of like, you know, how you would make cheap birds when you're a kid. Mm-hmm. And that that's the best I could, I could describe it. But that was the only shape we got to see through it. And McDonald's plane. <laughs> it was McDonald's plane. That was exactly it. They were just traveling. They were traveling away, way, uh, getting the secret sauce from somewhere. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. But yeah, dude. There's some crazy mysteries for me in that place. <laughs> like there was, and I don't want to touch much on this because I think there's some reality to this part. But there was a bus stop on the very far end that I used to go to school off of. Um, there were several times where the bus started having to pick us up at another area, and it turns out supposedly um, some serial killer was like snagging kids from that bus stop over on that corner, mm-hmm. and would never see them again. And they would find the bodies in the ditch that was nearby. Which was weird because I don't think any any of the people from our bus stop would ever disappear. Yeah. But maybe other ones were from another school, but I don't recall another bus picking up anybody for another school. So it was like it was a weird mystery, but it kind of gets a cement gets cemented bit but a little bit when the bus stop has to move down to the other side and stuff too. I yeah. was like, what the hell is going on here? And there was a creepy, there was a creepy farmer dude on the other side of that ditch too. So we didn't really qu- ask many questions. <laughs> so, but yeah, Faversham, dude, this this Faversham park was like the crux of a lot of creepy childhood mysteries. Like, I could probably write a whole Goosebumps series off of that place. That, that place was nuts. I guess. Was, was... <laughs> oh, okay. So, so it also makes reminds me of this other one. One of my friends told me about uh, it was him and his girlfriend. So with with like another lake or park, but more mutant fish. <laughs> they had bass in this one. This one. Well, they, they they said like they they went to park, and there was like these group of guys who it was like ten to twelve guys who were like gonna go do something, and they they were following them, and then they turned off somewhere, and I think. Uh, I can't remember this. Basically, they lost sight of them right. when they were like going around the lake, and they're like, "Where the hell did these guys go?" Because so they're like, "Okay," <laughs> so so they they got to their car and they're like, "Let's see where these guys come from." So they waited like 
20 to 30 more minutes and the guys came out and they're like oh all right see you guys yeah let's do this get let's do this again another time like where did they go like <laughs> like it's a park there's no there's no like there's nowhere they could have went <laughs> and um uh, his girlfriend's like maybe, maybe there was like a secret cave where like people go to have gay orgies <laughs> 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 but i'm like no i know what you mean because like it's it's just a it's it's just like a path around there. like unless they went off unless they were trespassing right. but they they didn't know where they went right. so yeah <laughs> I mean, there was there, there was a uh, dirt field in another area, kind of close to this neighborhood, that uh, I used to hang out with a lot, and it's it's since been developed over to be just corporal mumbo jumbo. But back then, there was an interesting like one end used to have a lot of people riding dirt bikes up and down these like massive jumps people dug up and made. It was like it was crazy. Like we could see them from our house and stuff and it was like really cool spectacles from far and I was cool but then like when we'd go over there there was like other ditches that you can dig out and kind of build like we end up building like our own little hut over one of these like weird holes and crap and there was kids that were like teenagers who would destroy stuff and just steal our like food stores that we would actually have when me and my brothers would do anything Mm -hmm. but there was altered times where we would see teenagers go out there and just disappear somewhere so there's a possibility they had something similar you know okay in nearby like it was just some kind of like ditch that kind of like turns into a little hovel that they just all hang out and do drugs and stuff (laughs) so there's that well he said there's like they're like adult age like 20 to 30 year old guys oh wow so (laughs) trespassing it's definitely (laughs) trespassing nobody owned houses back then (laughs) But, actually, um, probably every single one of them owned houses. <laughs> <laughs> the economy was actually good. <laughs> but um, I got another one, a weird one, from California as well, too. Um, I think the name was Lost Lake. Or at the very least, like, that's what we used to call it. Right. But that, that, was, that was a really, really creepy place. Mostly because my parents What's, would always... What, what is up with that, with lakes and stuff, man? Like, like, that's always really creepy names. Like the, well, no, not even that. But, like, the dirt field... Mm-hmm. Never really had anything creepy in it. You know, they would have coyotes and stuff in it. They would have a fox that we would train. But there was nothing really creepy. There was, like, stuff that was, like, obvious dangers because there would be, like, a homeless person sleeping in it or something mm-hmm. at one point in time. And, like, like obvious, clear dangers. And that's it. No, oh, okay. You know, like, there was nothing spooky. There's nothing... <laughs> but late lakes? Yeah, lakes. Lakes are all <laughs> spooky, man. Like, well, what is up with that? I'm not even, I, I'm not even sure if it was Ghosts are thirsty, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even sure if it was a lake. It was, it was. I think it was like a river or like part of a dam. Right. But um, it was like a giant river and flowed into a dam. I think. But um, there's like you know the the spot that we went to. They were talking about like my like my my parents were talking about like all the rumors and all the creepy shit that would happen here and like supposedly someone killed themselves and there's like this rope. It looked like a noose that was hanging there and like oh somebody hung themselves there and it's like. I think I think about it now. I'm like, you know, if they really got to retrieve a body from a noose, they just cut it. Like they wouldn't, yeah. they wouldn't untie it and then leave it there. So and then retie it into a noose. <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking like somebody was just like uh, trying to freak people out by yeah. tying it. Yeah, and there. like it's 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 stuff like that too that just tries it. Like maybe it was actually a rope swing type of thing. Yeah. That people just swing well, into it was, and stuff. It was, it's really small. It was like arm's length type yeah. of rope. Yeah, and well, who knows? Maybe somebody cut it down. There, yeah. There's there's a possibility that like maybe a father hated. Well, no, it, no, or no maybe the like, noose is still there too, though. Like the the loop and the yeah. and the string was still there. Oh, then it could be still be a swing. Yeah. Like let's be real here. We're not uh, like it could easily still be a swing because yeah. we used stuff that used to be like it, it slowly tightened down, but we used to have a rope that would tie around a tire, but the tire eventually eroded, and it slowly turned into something that would resemble a noose because it would just kind of shrink over okay. time and then it was just this small little handle we grabbed and then we swung into the river and stuff too yeah like there was it's a possibility i'm yeah. not i'm not ruling it entirely out but i'm <laughs> just saying like if somebody did see that and it was an actual real thing that somebody was reporting on there's a possibility that was literally just a swing that the people used to kind of swing into yeah. the dam and stuff so but um well i mean like it was kind of like over the lake too mm-hmm so it was, it was like, um, how would I put it? 
it looked too flimsy to pull the body, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so you're just I mean, like, let's be real. So, I'm, so I was just like, yeah, they, they were just fucking with us, basically. Or basically. somebody did it like, ooh, isn't it spooky that there's a noose here? But or a fairy was just done, just done <laughs> but, with everything. Yeah. There was no magic in this world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that thing is really creepy though. And then like, so so I so one time we went, we we were there and. Uh, I wanted to booby trap a tree, so I got a, like a, like a rock, like a like a pebble. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't like a giant rock, but it was like I don't know, size of a quarter, maybe half dollar. Right. And I stuck it on a branch, and I was like, ah, ha, 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 "This is gonna be so funny if it fell on my sisters." So I I, I kind of kept it there. I forgot about it later throughout the day, and before we were gonna leave, um, you just hear an old man. Ow! What the hell? Well. Something struck my foot, so, like my my, my my pinky toe. A rock flew flew out of nowhere and struck my toe really hard. And um, I was like, "Who threw that?" Because I was really really pissed. Like, because so it could have been the rock, but the angle that it fell in was like at a forty five degree angle. It, it didn't do like a. It wasn't like a direct. Drop, direct drop. Yeah, it was like a like a weird forty five degree angle, and it hit it, it hit my foot really hard, and I was like, all right, who threw that? And my, one of my sisters was like, oh, I did it, haha. <laughs> and later on that day, when we got home. She's like, I didn't throw it, and <laughs> cause she was freaking out, cause she was like, I she didn't know who threw it, and just to like calm us down, she was like, I I was the one who threw it, and no. Nope. Yeah. Wait, well, you're to the left of me. This came from the right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was it, actually. She was to my left, and it came from the right. And there was nobody on my right side. Kids are stupid. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what we are saying. Because, <laughs> um, and, and it flew at a four or five degree angle. So if it was like my rock that I hit up at the tree, because the tree was behind me as well too. So yeah. if it was that tree, it would have like flew. So it had to trajectory. fly and then come back around in yeah. front of you. Uh, yeah. So I was like. Because I was thinking, like, I guess she threw it. Like, oh, I used to be a bitch, and we were, like, fighting. <laughs> and, then we, and then we finally went home. My mom had to calm us down. And then, yeah, we got home. And a few like a few days later, I think, she was like, I didn't throw that. And we couldn't figure out who did it. But that was, yeah, that was really freaky. <laughs> I mean, I guess it was my own hubris tree to being a, a stupid jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so I got what I deserved, but at the same time, like... That was really weird, though. That's that's funny how, like, the hubris of the child is so, like, impervious, too. Yeah. Like, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to make something hurt. <laughs> I'm so smart. Like, I was, like, when you're looking back at it, like, wow, that was stupid. That was <laughs> genuinely stupid. Yeah. Like, so yeah. maybe it was something teaching me a lesson, but at the same time, like, that was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that just sounds really weird. But what about... Like obviously, we there, there's mysteries that we think about that are just still kind of like unsettling for us as adults. Is there ones that like when you grew up, something finally like clicked together, and just made sense and completely <laughs> removed any mystery of what you used to think about? Chupacabra. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Like, um, yeah, you, you see the mainstream media like, oh, he's just this giant. Oh, he's yeah. like this weird alien, and he has a bunch of spikes and sharp teeth. No, it was this mangy dog. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, after, after like, years of it terrorizing us, it was just a dog. Like, yeah, mangy dog, yeah. <laughs> just a wild mangy dog. Yeah. Was there anything that happened in your personal life that you were just like, oh, that makes sense now, like, coming back to it? Um, I mean, <laughs> the, the only thing I think of was happy face. Happy so. face? So I can't remember if I told this one or not, but that's all right. We're, this gonna, one, we're gonna this roll with it. It's been it's been what almost <laughs> three years since we started doing uh, yeah. your turns again. So there's that. But holy babe, crap! So so we, when we were kids, um, our, our oldest sister she brought back these like cool stickers and books that are like glow in the dark, and her dad was like, "Oh, you guys like like check out this shit." So he took us all in the bathroom, and he turned off the lights. And there's these two happy faces on the wall, and one was kind of like dimmer, and the other one was like, um, what is it like, like brighter? Brighter, or? yeah. And it got really quiet. Ah, we all 
<laughs> we all freaked out. <laughs> uh, I can understand, like, if I was my dad, I would have laughed my ass off. <laughs> Because we were having so much fun, and I'm pretty sure he was like, oh, they're going to love this. And we freaked out. <laughs> but it could have been glow-in-the-dark paint. <clears throat> like, it probably was. But at the same time, too, it was really weird, I guess. Maybe they, like, they, they stuck something behind the wall and they painted over it because... It was like in the wall. I, I remember. So one, it was probably like just thin paint and stuff too. I don't know. So it could still get all that light power and stuff. Yeah, because like I tried scrubbing at it once and it, it wouldn't go away. Oh wow! It was like really in there, so I don't know what it was. Wow, <laughs> that's kind of, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's creepy though. Um, for me, that it was it's it, it feels so stupid to think about now. So back in my like probably mid to late teens, there was a. Uh, like hor- like I was getting into like a lot of the spooky stuff, trying to understand a lot of spooky stuff, trying to get into that goth thing, because I had a fucking goth thing, let's say that, you know? And I end up running into this like haunted telling of a place called Haystack Landing. Now, a lot of people out there will probably already know what I'm talking about, because it was like a notorious internet phenomenon back then about like Haystack Landing had so much horror stuff that was going on. Like, there was like this uh husband would marry and then murder and then marry and then murder and then marry and then murder um all of his spouses and children every single time and bury them and the malevolency eventually like they built a whole theater near there and then they all burned uh, burned alive in it and uh, like one of the docking bays uh kids were supposed to go there on a tour and one kid recalled um this dark figure pushing kids in between the barge and the boat and stuff and they all got crushed and stuff like that and he only survived just barely and all this crap and eventually like co like these like construction workers like several of them would get fall ill and then just violently like vomit and bleed out of every orifice until they were like dehydrated and die and like there was this whole thing right Mm -hmm. and like it was such a huge thing so when people talk about like oh man have you heard about haystack landing dude that is nuts man that is crazy right like it was a whole thing in these inner circles i grew older and i was probably like roughly in my mid late 20s right and somebody was talking about haystack or something about haystack landing i'm like oh shit kind of like that one situation and the guy goes what do you mean i'm like well and i repeated some of the stories and stuff it was like some a lot of heinous stories right yeah and and he goes that never existed that never happened dude <laughs> i was like what do you mean like i was like kind of like taken back so i googled it again uh-huh. right now that everyone's actually connected like internet nonsense you know everyone's actually truly connected to the internet and information can be traveled very fast um yeah all of that was debunked all of that was made up okay so all of that was reported on <laughs> but it was all made up for a 1999 horror film called incident at haystack landing Ah, well, damn. Yeah, right? <laughs> and, like, it wasn't, like, it wasn't, like, one thing that, like, would always haunt me and stuff. Like, well, like, it was just one of the things that, like, was, like, whoa, this was a really dark place. I should really check this place out when I'm so cool and edgy and nonsense because I'm a dumb teenager because I couldn't get any less dumb from the kid to teenager years. You just get more dumb, you know? And it was, like, it was just, oh, yeah, I remember that phase in my life. And they're like, oh, yeah, that phase was fake then. And I'm like, no way. And I look it up, well, son of a bitch, it was. <laughs> like, it was really, it was, like, then it was, like, it, like, there are the details in it when stuff when you were reading it back then. And you don't really have any other, like, cross-references like we have now. It just, like, weighs on you. Like, oh, that is some heavy crap, dude. And, like, <laughs> I remembered that impact and stuff. And then, like... Later on, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's kind of like that one time I read about it. And he's like, yeah, that never happened, though. And the reason why the dude was very, very adamant about it is because the dude kind of lived near it when he was a no, kid. Okay. So it never happened. I'm like, bullshit. <laughs> but there was, there, there was a place that people thought the sto- house was ha- haunted because the, uh, the um, man supposedly killed his wife in grievance after their kid was stillborn or something like that. Okay. Like, I think like, I could be wrong on that, that part of the story, but like that, that sounds more of like the old ways of stuff that happens. Cause you know, we were all extremely more superstitious back then too. And 
we also didn't treat mental illness the way we would treat it now, yeah. even though we don't really treat it well now. You know, <laughs> like it's, just bleed them out, get the ghosts out. Also, take this cocaine; it's fine. <laughs> like it's it's stupid, right? Yeah. But um, outside that, he's like, yeah, everything else was made up. The barge is nowhere near the place <laughs> called Haystack Landing, and the only danger is people would fall off the bridge and get wet. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, that was basically it. And I was like, man. <laughs> Like, I wasn't even, like, bummed. I was just kind of, like, kind of taken back. Like, holy crap, how did I just sit here and believe this? And nobody ever dropped this bomb on me until that that, that time. Yeah. It was like a full-on slap in the face, too. It was like, wake <laughs> the hell up. Like, it was... And I was like, wow. How did it, Like, how did none of this come up again from the, the two eras that I lived in? Like, how come this never came back up? You know? Like, yeah. it was just wild, right? Um, but, yeah, like... There's a lot of mysteries out there, and I think there's I think there's still more mysteries that we can talk about that would make this episode way too long. <laughs> so we'll probably kind of stop it right there, though. We're 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 pretty good on the spookiness today, right? Um, but I'd like to go ahead and thank you all guys for listening in on our content. If you like our content, feel for free to like, subscribe, and always share it. Make us uh, get bigger wherever possible. And as always. We will see you on the other side. Hey everyone, this is Paraka. And Ghost. I would like to say thank you for listening to our podcast. If you like our content, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe and share our video with your friends. You can also follow and support us on other social media such as Minds and Rumble. Links in the description below.